Thank you, Brandon and Elaine. I love you guys. They're so great. <laughs> I, I was thinking back to my high school career. Anybody here remember high school? Uh, for some of you, uh, you're, just, you're still in it. <laughs> but many of us, that's a long time ago. What's the most stressful class in high school? Hint, it's not algebra. It's not history. It's driver's ed. Oh my goodness, that is the most stressful class. And I remember two distinct memories from my driver's ed class way a long time ago. We were learning how to drive horse and buggy. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, but the first one was roll call, the first day, first day of class. And my first name is hard to pronounce. It's, you can't sound it out. No one can figure it out. And I would know when they get towards the end of the alphabet, you know, it'd be like Ronnie Smith here, uh, Tammy Thomas here, Glenda Oversot here, and then uh, on this particular time, I, I knew it was me, I knew it was me, the teacher goes, Mr. or Miss Wakefield? Oh, that ruined my day. <laughs> and apparently I still remember it 42 <laughs> years later. Uh, but the other thing I distinctly remember from Driver's Ed was this video. They did these simulators, we called them back in the day, where uh, you'd sit in this little thing, sort of like, a little, uh, like an arcade game, and uh, you could see a little video shot of what it would look like in the rear view mirror and the side mirrors as if you were driving. And they, they showed this, uh, this person getting ready to back out of the driveway, and then the camera cut to back behind the car on the driveway. There was a little, small child sitting on the driveway playing with toys. And uh, if you weren't looking out for that child, it's in your blind spot. You would not see that child. And it, it just made such an impact on me, like that I could run over a child or a pet or a bicycle or something that literally every single time I go to leave my driveway, I look back behind my car to make sure nothing is there because of that video all that time. And it just it was such a powerful lesson on blind spots because, man, you don't know what's there in your blind spot. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, blind spots. We're in a series called For Such a Time as This. And we introduced it last week. And we get that phrase from the story of Esther. She is a hero that is talked about in the Bible. And she was exiled from her homeland. She was a Jewish girl. And through a strange uh, turn of events, she was chosen for her great beauty to be the queen of Persia. But the king did not know that she was Jewish. Well, she became aware of a plot to kill all of the Jews in the Persian Empire, so in several countries. And Esther was tempted to keep quiet because she just felt like there was nothing that she could do about it. But her mentor asked her if perhaps she was made queen for such a time as this. And that's where we get that title. I want to ask you the same thing. Is it possible that God plopped you on this planet for just such a time as this? And what a crazy time it is. <laughs> I'm going to turn to a little portion of the Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 17. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Listen to this. Make the most. Somebody say, make the most. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly or foolishly. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. Powerful words, and they apply so much today. There, there's a kind of a challenge in there for all of us. Make the most of every opportunity. And that word opportunity, it, it, it means an opportune time or specifically an opportune moment. And it just suggests a, a moment that has never been before, that is going to be fleeting and we may never get again. This is our opportune moment. And the Bible says, make the most of that moment. Make the most of this window of opportunity. Don't act foolishly or thoughtlessly, but instead have wisdom and good sense and sound judgment. Thinking about the crazy time that we're in, 
the Assemblies of God, which were an Assemblies of God church, were part of that, that movement. The Assemblies of God, for years, has denounced racism. And uh, racism, of course, is the idea that one's race is the superior race or that other ethnic groups or races are inferior. And in light of the recent murder of George Floyd and the others this year, our national and local Assemblies of God leaders have reaffirmed our stand uh, uh, against racism. And here's a, just a little excerpt from that, from that statement of position that I, I want to read for you. We oppose the sin of racism in any form. We call any and all to repentance who have participated in the sin of racism through personal thought or action or through church and social structures or through inactivity. Somebody say inactivity. Inactivity in addressing racism as individuals or as a church. We pray to God to give us courage to confront the sin of racism where it may be found in our own lives, in our churches, in our social structures, and in the world. And we resolve to participate with the Holy Spirit, listen to this, in actively working against racism at home and abroad, and we seek the reconciliation of people to God and to one another. I love that statement. There is not a lot of wiggle room in that statement. We oppose and hate the sin of racism, and we're not going to just strive to be non-racists. Non we're going to actively work to be anti-racism. I love that. And right now, this is an opportune time in our country to do a few things, to examine our own hearts, to listen to God for his specific call for each one of us and to take action, no matter how small that action is. Because when you take a small step, you can make a big difference. When you take a small step, you can make a big difference. Many of us here in the Pacific Northwest, we, we probably think we don't even have racism here. We're, we're not in that part of the country but right here, where we are, when you search your own heart for racism, you might have some of these different reactions. You might get defensive and say, well, I may have some biases, but they're justified, so that's not racism. Hmm. You might feel self-righteous. Hey, I'm a social crusader, man. I'm totally woke. I know what's up. <laughs> or you might feel helpless. And my son is laughing at me right now, and I love it. That is awesome. It's like, Dad just said woke. He's already tweeting. Dad just said woke. You might feel helpless. Uh, you, might, you might have feelings like, well, there's nothing I can do to help, you know, fight racism in America. Or maybe you're apathetic. You might be having thoughts like, racism doesn't even concern me. It's just not, it's not even about me. The trouble is... We all have blind spots. Uh, writer Mark Ballinger said, a blind spot is an area in our lives that is negatively impacting us, but that we cannot see. Blind spots are character defects that hurt others and ourselves, but we have yet to identify them as real problems. David wrote in the book of Psalms in the Bible, in Psalm 19:12. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? He's talking about blind spots. And then he went on to pray, cleanse me from those hidden faults, those blind spots. In the book, The Third Option by Miles McPherson, he identifies some specific blind spots just to kind of help us figure out if we've got any in our lives. And uh, there, there are blind spots that can happen no matter what side of the issue of racism you're on. So, uh, for example, a blind spot might sound like this kind of thinking. I believe that I have no racism in me, but I resist letting certain people get too close to my family. This kind of racism shows up when one of your kids start hanging out with or dating 
someone from a different ethnic group. Jeff Foxworthy said, if you love all people, as long as they all don't live on your street, you might have a blind spot. Here's another blind spot. I say that all people are equal, but in my heart, I believe that my ethnicity is superior to others. So let's say maybe you have a friend of a a different ethnicity. You invite them into your world all the time, but you never venture into theirs. You call them your equal, but you think of yourself as their helper, their giver, their mentor, their savior. Why not switch things up a little bit and ask to enter their worlds? Here's another potential blind spot. I declare that all people are equal, but truly I feel and act inferior to certain people. You might resent it when someone puts you down, but then without even realizing it, it's a blind spot, you take those words in and you begin to live them out. Maybe you listen to music that demeans people who look like you. It's time to agree with what God says about you and what God says about all people equally. The Bible says in Genesis, you are made in the image of God. No matter what you look like, you have God's fingerprints on you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, it says in Psalms. You are God's workmanship. God made you, no matter how you look. God made you, and you look like him. You show a little bit of who he is, just in you, in how you are. Here's a a last blind spot I'll I'll talk about today. uh, Someone might find yourself saying, I don't have any blind spots. Just frankly, I'm just not a biased person. So I would say to you, Jesus, is that you? Think about it. You'll get it. We all tend to have blind spot bias. (laughs) That is, we see ourselves as less biased than most other people. That's a blind spot. (laughs) In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. The trouble is, we say, we compare ourselves to someone and we say, Well, I'm not as racist as that person, but that person is not the standard. Jesus Christ is. We have all perpetuated racism by things that we do or by things that we allow in this country. In Matthew chapter 7, It's the Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus' most famous um, talks that he gave to his disciples to just to tell them how to live as a a member of the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to start down in verse 3 to 5. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye? Listen to this. When you have a log in your own. I just love it when Jesus just gets in there and he he just calls it like it is. So, by the way, that speck is a little piece of sawdust or a little wood chip, a little splinter. It's made of the same material as the log. So Jesus says, why worry about a speck in your own eye, in your friend's eye, rather, when you've got a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, here, come here, come here, let let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye, when you can't even see past the log in your own eye? That's a blind spot. Jesus says, hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye. And then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Woo! Jesus, get with it. Jesus is the sinless son of God. He knew no sin. He did not even have original sin. So Jesus did not have a log in his eye. He came to take all our specks and all our logs, all of our little sins, all of our big sins. He came to take all of those sins upon himself on the cross. Jesus didn't have a log in his eye. 
he carried one on his back. Jesus didn't come to cast stones at other people. He came to roll the stone away and open the door to eternal life. Jesus said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that's what Jesus did for you and for me. He laid down his life for us. Jesus was a friend to people who despised and rejected him. Because Jesus loved you and me unconditionally, you and I can go out and we can love others unconditionally. If I could sum up this whole message in just one sentence, this is what it would be. When you deal with your blind spots, Jesus can love through you. When you deal with your blind spots, then Jesus can love through you. I've been on a little bit of a journey myself over these past uh, couple weeks uh, as everything has just gone so crazy in our country. And I, I've been talking to you about taking some steps, but I've been taking some steps as well. I have been reading a ton, anything I can get my hand on. I've been watching uh, conversations and videos and listening to podcasts. And I took a little uh, uh, diagnostic assessment test to see uh, uh, how, how colorblind I was or not. Like, I, I, I have just been really immersing myself. I, I've had some great conversations, hours of conversations with people who look different than me just so that I can understand and uh, love them more and take down more of my walls and understand how I've been a part of the problem and just understand what the problems are. And, and it has been so helpful to me. It has been life-changing for me. And I know that I still have some blind spots. I know that. But I'm a little bit more aware of the ones that I have, and uh, I, I'm, I'm able to begin to do something about it, trying to change attitudes, trying to change my thinking. I'm, I'm even taking something called the, the 21 Day Racial Equity Challenge. And I, I put that resource and some other resources on my personal Facebook page if, if you're interested in just learning some more. That's, they're just some resources to help you learn, learn what's going on, learn how things are. When you deal with your blind spots, Jesus can love through you. Small steps make a big difference. So let's each take inventory of our blind spots. I, I listed four different um, uh, potential blind spots you or I might have today, but there, there's a ton of other things that could be going on inside of us. Those, what David called, secret sins lurking down inside hidden faults. Take inventory and then do what you can to right any wrongs that you've done. Man, that's a great step. You may not be able to change the world, but you could change your world. You could change one person's world, one friend's world. And then go love the world the way Jesus did. Love your neighbor as yourself. When you deal with your blind spots, Jesus can love others through you. And don't we all want that? I'd like to pray for you and for all of us, really, in this time. Would you just pause what you're doing for a moment? And let's pray. Let's pray together. Lord, first of all, I just want to ask you to heal our sight. Lord, uh, so many times uh, I've thought, and so many of us have thought, we see things very clearly. We know what's up. We know what's, what's in our hearts. And then we're in a situation and something comes out that we didn't even know was there. So Lord, I pray you, you would uh, reveal our blind spots to us one at a time if that's what you gotta do and heal those areas. Heal those unloving areas in us. Help us to truly love. Lord, I pray that you would help us to deal with our own logs. Literally, if every one of us, Lord, just came to you for help, and said, Lord, help me get the log out of my eye, we wouldn't have to fix anybody else's splinters or specks because we'd all be working on ourselves. So help me, Lord, to work on myself. Help all of us to, to work on the, getting the log out of our eye, that, the huge blind spot that we have towards others. Lord, I pray for an end to racism in our nation and in our world. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to develop a new appreciation 
for how you've made all of us, the variety that you have put into humanity. And I, I thank you, Lord, that I can see you a little better when I look at black skin, brown skin, red skin, yellow skin, pale skin. I can see you better. I can see who you are. Help us to see you in the people around us, Lord, and help us to end racism in our generation, Lord. And Lord, I pray for me and for each of us that you would show us one small step we could take. What are you calling us to do? What part of our world are you calling us to make a difference in? And Lord, we're gonna say yes. We say yes to your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have one more thing I'd like to pray for you about. And I don't know where you are spiritually. I think everyone's on a journey either closer to God or running the other way. And I don't know which way you're going today. And I don't know what's in your heart, but you do, and God does. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ, the one who bridged all gaps, setting aside his royalty in heaven to come and just walk as a humble man among us. I want to invite you to invite him into your life. How do you do that? Well, you say, Jesus, I turn away from all my sin, all those things that we do that harm yourself and others. I turn away from that. I turn my life over to you. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to, let, to lead my life. I want to challenge you today to become an apprentice of Jesus Christ. Not just someone who thinks he's nice, but someone who follows him, spends time with him, learns from him, and acts like him. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ today. And if you'd like to do that, I, I want to just lead you in a prayer and just kind of coach you through it. So I'll say a line of a prayer. You repeat it after me. And uh, I just uh, challenge you, don't, don't say it to me, though. Say it to Jesus. All right? Let's pray. And I want to lead you in that prayer. Let's pray. Let's do it together right now. Jesus, you say, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive my sin and make me new. I choose to become your apprentice. Please lead me, starting now, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And really good news, if you prayed that prayer today, Jesus answered yes. When you asked him to forgive your sins, he forgave your sins, and you are new. But now it's time to start following him. So I want to challenge you to just do one more thing. It's just uh, an echo of what we've been talking about today. Would you go to the website and halfway down the homepage, just click on connect card. At the bottom of the connect card, as you fill that out, give me enough info so I can give back to you. I encourage you in your new uh, faith journey. At the bottom of the connect card, there's a little box that uh, I want to ask you to check that says, I made a decision today to follow Jesus. You check that box and I'll know and I'll be cheering you on and be praying for you. Thanks for participating today. Wow, Pastor Garen, what an amazing message today. Well, if you, if this is your first time with us, or if you are just wanting to connect now, go ahead and text NEW to NSC to 97000. Also, if you have a prayer request, our pastors are still praying over all these prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, text those to 253 733 1640. Also, it is not too late to sign up for an online Bible study. I'm in one and it is amazing. I am loving it. Louis Giglio is just like blowing my mind every single week. It's amazing. And also, your kids have videos for them. We have videos for them on YouTube and they, they're going to love them. I promise you, they're going to love them. Pastor CJ has worked so hard on these. They're amazing. And with all that being said, next week, right here, not in the building, but on YouTube or on Facebook, however you're watching. Uh, we're going to celebrate Father's Day, and we have a gift that we are, it's a surprise, but we're going to give it to you uh, during the service. So we just want to invite you to log back in right here uh, next Sunday. With all that being said, it was so great to have, to be with you guys, to have you watching with us. We love you so much, and we'll see you next week.